let's take a look at problem one three a we are finally here our first full set of financial statements. This problem asks us to prepare an income statement, which we're gonna do in this video. In the next part of the video, we'll do a statement of retained earnings and then a balance sheet. So three new financial statements to be explored. I just wanna remind you what happens on these big three financial statements. In fact, there's a big four, but we're only looking at three here. The first one, the income statement, we've discussed this before, but it's worth reiterating is the summary of a company's revenues, revenues of the company doing whatever it does to earn money. So the revenues minus its costs, its expenses. And if the revenues exceed the cost, we say the company made a profit. It was profitable, but we don't use the word profit. I'm gonna use the abbreviation NI. Can you guess what NI stands for? net income. So net income happens when the company makes money. And so the income statement tells us, did the company make any money? And if so, how much did it make, right? How profitable was it? Uh, you'll sometimes hear the income statement referred to as the P&L or the profit and loss statement. We're gonna call it the income statement, revenues minus expenses equals net income. And we'll summarize that shortly. That, that'll be in this video. In the next part of the video, we'll introduce, this will be the shortest of the three videos, the statement of retained earnings. This tells us how the company's retained earnings changed during a period. We start with our beginning retained earnings. We look at how it changed, and then we calculate the ending retained earnings. Now, how might retained earnings change? Well, it generally is gonna go up by the amount of the net income from the income statement, and it's gonna go down if the company paid out any dividends. So remember what retained earnings means. Retained earnings is an account that keeps track of the profits that we've kept in the company. So if I had retained earnings and I made a profit, net income, my shareholders might opt to pay themselves a dividend. If they pay themselves as a dividend, that reduces the amount of profits I've kept in the company. Remember, retained, keep, earnings profits. So the shareholders have a choice when they make a profit. They can take the money out, take a dividend, or put that profit, put that net income into retained earnings. And this statement summarizes that. The third statement we're going to look at is the balance sheet. And the balance sheet captures the accounting equation. A equals L plus SE. Assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. And so we'll do the balance sheet and you'll see it's, it's not too difficult to calculate, although formatting it can be tricky, but the usefulness of the balance sheet is, does this company have enough assets to pay the bills? What kind of financial position is the company in? Are they gonna be in trouble? Are they gonna run out of money next year? I would learn that by looking at the balance sheet. Now, there is a fourth financial statement. Some textbooks introduce this in chapter one. I don't do it until chapter 11. I think most textbooks really dive in later in the course. It's called the statement of cash flows. And it says, how did my cash balance change during the year? And it's the most complicated of the four. So I save it for later in the course. The, the big picture way it works is you start with your beginning cash balance. You say, how did my cash change? And you calculate your ending cash balance. Now, this is a gross oversimplification. You'll learn about operating, investing, and financing cash flows and calculating those amounts can be tricky when you're a rookie. So we're gonna leave that four statement. It's a very important statement. People in finance really want to know about cash balances and cash flows of a company. So it's a very useful statement, but we're gonna save it for later in our course because it is the most complicated to prepare. So in this video, we're gonna do the income statement, but in this series of videos, we'll do the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. So let's jump in and prepare our income statement. Well, let's read the problem. So again, download the problem from myname.com, tonybell.com, but let's read the problem and see what we're up against. 13A. Ferry Shuttles is a bus company offering rides to outdoor adventurers. In the summer, she caters to mountain bikers and in winter to skiers. Sherry's company has the following account balances all on December 31st, 2029, and for the year then ended, unless otherwise noted, and there's a big long list of accounts. It says, make me an income statement. That's what we're going to do in this part of the video. I got the wrong pen here. Uh, we'll do an income statement in this part of the video in part two, 
a statement of retained earnings. And in part three, we'll do parts C and D here, the balance sheet and the ratio. So that's the game plan here. But before I can prepare the financial statements, and we will do it in this video, we need to identify our accounts. This is a lot like problem one, two of the workbook. If you haven't done that, I highly recommend the problem. I think there's a free one, two, a video. I, I think you should watch that, but we're going to flex that same muscle. So we're going to go through each account and we're going to identify, is this an asset, a liability, shareholders, equity account, revenue, expense, or dividend asset, liability, shareholders, equity, revenue, expense, or dividend. We'll identify each account because that's that way we know where to put it. Does it go on the income statement or the balance sheet or where does it go? So let's start with buildings. What is a building? Well, I hope you're shouting at your screen, a building's an asset. Now, if it's an asset or liability, let's go a step further like we did in problem one, two. Is it current or long term? And the answer is a building. It's going to last 30 years. It's a long term asset, right? A year is sort of our cutoff between current and long term. It is a long term asset. What about wages expense? Well, I hope again, you're shouting at your computer. It says expense for goodness sakes. It's, it's an expense. Yes, it's an expense. No tricks there. Shuttle revenue. Well, I would suggest that is a revenue account. Bank loan payable. Payable is a real signifier of a liability. And this is a liability. The question is it current or long term? Generally speaking, we can assume bank loans are long-term unless it tells us otherwise. Now it is very possible to have a short-term bank loan, like six months, seven months or whatever, but uh, unless it tells me otherwise, I'm gonna assume a bank loan is long-term. Accounts receivable, that again, the word payable tells me liability. The word receivable signals to me it's an asset and it's a current asset. So when we've done some work for a client, they haven't paid us yet. We're not gonna wait a year for payment. So because it's less than a year, it's current. Office supplies, another current asset. Here I want you thinking of papers, pens, paper clips, you know, uh, uh, whiteboard markers for professors. Uh, this is current. They're, they're assets. They're stuff you can own and control that are good to own and control, but they uh, will uh, last less than a year. Uh, utilities expense, that's an expense. Repairs expense got the word expense in it. Wages payable. There's that word payable. What do I think? What I think payable. I think liabilities and so, so too should you. A wage payable. My employees aren't going to wait a year for me to pay their wages. This is current. Uh, moving over to fuel expense. Well, it's got the word expense. It's an expense. Dividends are dividends. They are their own category. So call dividends dividends. What about equipment? Equipment is an asset and it's a long-term asset. If you're wondering about the word net, we'll talk about that in problem one, four. For now, just kind of go with it. Okay, it's a long-term asset. Common shares, that's one of two shareholders equity accounts we're introducing here in chapter one. Common shares, it's counterpart retained earnings. Those are the two that we're interested in here. This is a shareholders equity account. Accounts payable, it's got the word payable and think of it as your unpaid phone bill. It's a current liability, I'll pay it in 30 days. Insurance expense, that's an expense. Depreciation expense, also an expense. Cash, the most current of current assets. And last but not least, retained earnings, that is my other shareholders equity account. Okay, so I know it's like we're nine minutes in here, but let's continue. We've set the table now. This is all table setting. Uh, maybe I'll put a little timestamp at the start of the video to, to tell people jump ahead if they uh, uh, don't want to sit through that, but uh, it's time now to prepare the income statement. We have sufficiently set the table. I think it was important table setting. I hope you'll agree. Um, so what is on an income statement? Well, we just said it's the summary of revenues and expenses. So I want to hone in on my revenues and my expenses. Just highlighting them. And I could ignore everything else. So it sort of helps me narrow things down to identify, well, what are my revenues and expenses? Because that's all I'm going to need for the income statement. When we're asked to prepare any financial statement, including this one, we need a three line title, three lines. The first line is the name of the company. So the first line is going to be Sherry's 
shuttles. The second line is the name of the financial statement we're asked to prepare. We are asked to prepare an income statement. You know, I'd like my pen to be just a touch uh, bigger here. Let's switch this for one notch thicker. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Let me switch this one. There we go. And so name of the company, name of the financial statement. The third line down is the date. And so this is a December 31st, 2029 income statement. For income statement and statement of retained earnings, we have to actually give a time period. So I'll show you what to do and then I'll explain why. This is for the year ended and then the date. For the year ended and the date is December 31st. 2029. Now, why do I have to say for the year ended? And the answer has to do with what's on the income statement. It's telling me how much money I made. Well, companies can report how much money they made for a month. They can report how much money they made for a quarter, which is three months, or as we're doing here, how much money they made for a year. But as a shareholder, you kind of need to know, am I looking at a monthly statement or a yearly one? Big difference, right? If you tell me you made $10,000 last month, I'll go, wow, you're making tons of money. If you say you made $10,000 last year, well, that's not that much money. Certainly in Canada, you can afford rent. If you made $10,000 last month, you can afford rent. So big difference. And, and the same is true for a company, right? If if they give me an income statement for a month, my uh, interpretation is very different than for a year. So we have to give a time period with an income statement. And, and we did. How did I know it was for a year? The question said, prepare an income statement for the year, right? Uh, that's how. So Okay, uh, so an income statement is the summary of revenues and expenses, and we're going to determine if revenues minus expenses equals net income. We'll determine how much money, if any, did we make. So we're going to start with revenue. So I'll do a big heading here. Revenues. And under revenues, I'm going to say shuttle revenue. And I'll just rev for short. And my shuttle revenue is $140,000. Now we're going to list our expenses. And the expenses are all the items I've highlighted in blue. Now, if you go on and do problem one four, you'll see it gets a little more complicated. We can have different classifications of expenses, operating and non-operating and taxes, and it, it'll get more complicated. But all these expenses just lump into the category of expense. So I'm just gonna do them in the order I see them, starting with wages expense of $35,000. Now you're gonna notice format choices I make. I, if I have a big long list of numbers, I list them on the left and I total to the right. Um, follow your professor's format conventions, but this is the way I'm going to encourage you to do it. So wages expense, next is utilities expense, $14,000. Next up is repairs expense, $13,000. And next up is fuel, $10,000. Next is insurance, 12. And last up is depreciation 21. Okay, so we've listed our expenses. We're gonna need our total expenses, which I do not know the number. I need a calculator here. Let's see, there is my calculator. Um, 35 plus 14 plus 13 plus 10 plus 12 plus 21. $105,000 is my total expenses. Uh, so revenues minus expenses equals net income. Did I make any money? Well, I can see I made some money. <laughs> 
right? How do I know I made some money? Well, 140 is my revenue, 105 is my expenses. I made a profit, I made net income of 140 minus 105, what is that? $35,000, hooray, we're almost done. Now, is $35,000 good or bad? I couldn't tell you. If last year I made $2,000, I'd say, well, 35, that's really good. If last year I made $150,000, I'd go, oh, 35, eesh, that's pretty bad. The truth is we don't know. When we look at income statements, we typically look at year over year, or month over month performance to see how we're doing compared to last time, or maybe look at a competitors and see how we're doing compared to our competition. A couple of formatting things. The bottom line number, in this case, net income, the bottom line of any financial statement gets two underlines. And here's some place where I make a choice formatting wise, and your professor may be different from me, so be careful here, but you gotta put dollar signs. I put a dollar sign beside the top number of each column. So I have two columns here, right? Uh, I've got my revenues and then my expenses. Because there was more than one expense, I put the list on the left, total on the right. So dollar sign at the top of each column and dollar sign beside anything with a double underline. So at this moment, I think I have a beautiful, spectacular income statement. Summary of revenues minus expenses equals net income. And I think we've done a wonderful job. In the next part of the video, we'll prepare a statement of retained earnings. So stay tuned for that one. Hit the thumbs up on your way out of here and onto the statement of retained earnings. See you in that video. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.